What's up everybody? Hey, it's Benjamin with the Samra Matson Group, the creators and the makers of the Axiom. A few months ago, I reached out to a contractor who was relatively new to the business, but he was running a few place and finish crews, so I thought he might be interested in, in uh, self-testing his slabs. So I reached out and shot him an email, and he, he sent me one back, and it was very short. And it said, Benjamin, thanks for reaching out, but I'm not sure how this would provide any value to contractors. Cheers. Now, I get it, it's not totally unusual, but this video is really in response to his email, because uh, I've traveled to over 25 states now in the last 12 months. I've talked to hundreds of contractors, hundreds of testing labs, kind of on the other side, and there's a few things that I've learned and seen some painful lessons that others have had to learn because they weren't self-testing and the advantages that they have once they do start self-testing. So that's what this video is about. A couple of months ago, I met with a contractor who was doing a lot of high-rise work and they were pouring floor after floor and what they were running into was some issues with their floors failing of all things. Now, a lot of times, as you, I'm sure you know, the, there's not an FL number spec on elevated decks, but their FFs weren't even hitting. And uh, it turns out that once they started self-testing, they were able to test alongside the lab and the lab that had been hired as the third party, turns out their, their machine was out of whack. It had gone on the fritz. And so because they started self-testing run for run, they were able to call that device into question and it turns out that they were able to save the day, save their bacon at least, cover their, their, own, uh, their own project because they were able to test the validity of the results from the lab and they didn't get strung out to dry with a bunch of remedial grinding or topping uh, by the Division 9 contractor who was trying to set tile and stuff. Uh, they didn't have to go back and get stuck with all that expense and all those man hours to fix something that wasn't their issue in the first place. It was a question of their device and the validity of the results. Without self-testing, they had to just be at the mercy of the lab and away you go. I'm not saying every lab is like that. I'm not saying every project is like that, but I've seen that on more than one occasion, especially on elevated decks where the deck really is going to do whatever it's going to do. As soon as, as soon as you pull the shoring, as soon as you tension it, it's going to do, it has a mind of its own. And so it's kind of preposterous to even have the numbers specified, but more and more as I talk to contractors, it's a legitimate thing and they're running into more and more specs on elevated decks. And so it's something to be aware of and something that I think self-testing can really save your bacon on if you run into issues. So the second thing is that if you are able to self-test, you are able to catch things sooner rather than later. So I have a client who places a lot of really big like warehouses and they'll do 40, 50,000, 60,000 square feet a day uh, when they really get rolling. Well, the lab, according to the standard, has 72 hours to come out, test your slab and send the report to you. And so in 72 hours, you can actually place a lot of concrete, especially at 60,000 square feet a day. And so what I've seen contractors have issues with is if they're not self-testing, they're totally at the mercy of the lab to know what their FF and FL numbers are coming up like. And by the time that 72 hours is up and the lab finally sent the report out, they've put down 200,000 square feet of concrete and it's too late to catch an issue that might have been with the benchmark or with their laser screed or with their finishing or forming process. By self-testing, they're actually able to catch those things and nip them in the bud before they really become an issue. The third thing is that old saying, what gets measured improves. This is a true in accounting, it's true in personal finance, it's true in weight, it's true in benching. What gets measured improves, what you focus on improves. And so what I've seen when, when customers come to us and they purchase a machine and they start to self-test, not just slabs that are spec for an FF and FL number, but every slab, when it becomes a tool in their tool belt and every crew has it, they, it becomes almost this, it can be this competition between crews and, it, and ultimately that number goes up. If we poured a 35, 25 yesterday and we know we can change this and do this tactic differently today and we can change this about our screening process and our finishing and our forming, 
all of this stuff for your crews, it can be such a helpful tool in how they can get better. And ultimately, this is about doing better work. It's not just about some game or some system. It's about doing better work for your clients. So it's for your sake of your clients, it's for the sake of your crew, so that they have metrics, they know how they can improve, and it's for your own peace of mind to be able to say and have this backlog of reports saying, we do this kind of work. We know what we're capable of. To me, that's the ultimate in self-testing. That's what you're doing. It's quality control, and ultimately, it's the difference in being reactive, that FF and FL is only something we talk about when it's a problem, to being proactive and really taking the bull by the horns. I hope this is helpful. I'm curious to hear from you guys. What are you doing for self-testing yourself? Are you hiring your own lab? Do you have a, a device that you use or is it not something you're doing at all? I'm curious to hear what kind of horror stories you've run into. Please put something in the comments below. Until next time, keep it real. I'm out.